today, uh, me and uh, Geoffrey are going to present the how to train a production level image classification, uh, image recognition system. Um, well, you probably already know about Wolfram Image Identify Net. Uh, basically, uh, you can obtain this uh, network uh, directly by the net model of uh, Wolfram Image Identify uh, Net version V1. It was trained back in 2017 uh, using an inception inspired architecture. And uh, ever since then, there have been a lot of development in the re uh, research of uh, optimized arch um, of uh, efficient architecture uh, in the uh, machine learning community. Uh, some basically optimize for the uh, for, for the architecture to be both light and fast. Some optimize uh, the training, uh, like uh, the training. Um, time uh, and accuracy of the model and uh, for the uh, for our project we've decided basically to uh, yeah uh, basically uh, attack the, the speed so that the models will be basically lighter and faster than our baseline model which is with five images and five v1 but still yield uh, basically uh, similar or higher classification results, let's say on the top one, top five uh, accuracies. And uh, an another task is also optimize the quality. So it might have uh, like, it can have similar model size or maybe a little bit like uh, heavier, but uh, it should achieve much higher classification results. Um, yeah. But first, let's recap the Wolfram Image Identify V1. So as I said, you can basically call the net model and then pass an image, and then you will get an output, or you can directly use the Image Identify function. Uh, the advantage of using Image Identify function is that uh, you can do more advanced stuff. Like, for example, in this image, you can ask to retrieve the top 10 uh, results connected like with the entity word car. car. <clears throat> and if you look at the outputs, you can see that the um, total sum of the results is more than one. Of course, uh, like as usual in the neural networks, the last output there is um, basically uh, sums to one because you have a softmax layer there. And uh, in here, the sum is not one because image identifier retrieves not only the uh, like classes on which the model was trained on, uh, but it also propagates uh, basically uh, is using an ontology knowledge uh, to get like more high level um, result that for example, although it's a convertible, it's like, which like 37 probability and all the other like um, automobile uh, type vehicles. <clears throat> but uh, like it's uh, definitely an automobile with 99 uh, like point uh, probabilities. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk a little bit about the training set. Uh, well, from image identify, um, so it consists of over 3 million training images and over 4,000 classes, exactly 4,315. And the training data set is not publicly available, but uh, you can see that basically a little bit uh, of the insights into the training data distribution per class. Uh, basically, um, it's not very well balanced for all the classes. Like we have several classes which have a few training data, uh, uh, few training data, and it comes partly from the fact that uh, we cover so many classes, and uh, a lot of them are like uh, it's a very diverse representation. So um, it's very hard to get like uh, a big amount of data for every, every type of class. So for example. Like to compare, uh, let's 
the outputs of image identify v1 with sufficient net v1, which is trained only on image net. Well, you can see that uh, Wolfram image identify covers like not only cases from the like nature or like from fauna and uh, flora, but also like fictional characters, like uh, bacteria types, uh, uh, images, uh, scenes, even planets, uh, the locations. So um, <laughs> the classes are very diverse. And uh, in here, you can see also the distribution like uh, of the classes, uh, like what kind of objects we are covering in for prime image identify. Um, yeah, so it, it's quite diverse. You have animal, flora, artifacts, um, abstract entities, which are basically can be fictional characters and so on. Um, okay. So let's, uh, for the uh, Wolfram image identify v2, we should choose a training network architecture. And basically uh, to do that, um, we're using the Wolfram neural net repository. And the plus is that Wolfram neural net repository covers a lot of networks which contain images. And like uh, this is uh, from blog post of one of our users, you can see that uh, the networks connected to images are very up to date. So uh, since our goal basically is quality and quantity, uh, let's compare several models in the uh, repository uh, to see which ones are like applicable for uh, training. <clears throat> basically, you can see on this plot uh, like uh, parameters efficiency versus the image net top accuracy. Uh, so like this one is the efficient net V1 and each dot represent a parametric model in our repository. So this is B0, B1 and so on. So um, yeah, yeah, you can see that we have very light models like shuffle net V2 or mobile net V3, but say come at the lower accuracy. So. Uh, these models are basically very used in the experiments to train the model for the uh, quality goal speed. And these models were uh, trained in the experiments for the quality goal uh, quality. Oh, so sorry, a performance goal quality. <clears throat> and in here, I have also some latency measures on, on my personal computer for the single image by, uh, by size of eight and by size 16. And these results are like very, um, so if you compare to Wolfram Image Identify V1, um, all, of, all of the models except for if it's not V2, uh, small one, um, are lighter than Wolfram Image Identify V1. Uh, and um, basically, yeah, uh, all of them, is, uh, Shuffle net wins definitely in the latency, uh, in, in the speed, and also compared to the um, like parameter efficiency. Um, yeah, so um, basically in our experiments we used so again shuffle net v two for the performance goal speed and efficient v one for the performance goal um, quality. Since it's a much heavier model, it more it can be more representative. Um, and so uh, basically, the idea of the training, since uh, we've been performing a lot of experiments, it was um, basically to have a, some kind of a trackable process over the experiments. Uh, uh, we've decided that we should, for you know, like each training experiment, we should have a training config. Uh, which you pass to the um, script, and then the script uh, should calculate basically that the, should uh, store the train net, the trained object uh, should contain, like, should store also checkpoints, intermediate checkpoints, um, in case some, uh, in case of the failed trainings, or uh, like uh, in case of some failures during the trainings and also uh, some logs like uh, the training calls and yeah, stuff like that. The end 
result also should be tested. So this is basically the basic workflow. And uh, yeah, so to run the script, like uh, it's very basic. You are just using Wolfram script uh, and then file and then train uh, the training file, um, the training script and then pass to the config. Basically, it's very useful because uh, since you're training in the remote and you're not using the notebook interface, you should uh, use the, the scripting. Uh, yeah, you, you should run basically scripts in, on the remote. So, um, And I also wanted to show some configuration file uh, to uh, give an idea or an inspiration for others to like make the trainings. So basically, um, what you need is the uh, path to store the results, then the training data set file, which contains the labels. Uh, you can have the net model arguments, let's say uh, the, the, for, for which like uh, to extract uh, the, the backbone so that the, the script can extract the backbone automatically. You can also do some like uh, operations on the net encoders and um, yeah, have like options how to like prepare the image augmentation layer or not, do some recursions and also change the net train parameters as much as you, basically you want. Um, yeah, so now I will stop sharing and Chopra will continue with the techniques to improve and regularize the um, training. So um, I'm going to talk about different techniques that are uh, useful for improving uh, the training on, on such uh, image classifiers. Uh, the first one, for example, is image augmentation. Uh, here we can use an image augmentation uh, layer in combination of, of the patent layer to augment the training data. Uh, so the, the basic idea is that we will create several uh, Kind of reflect, uh, random reflections on the horizontal axis, and as well as, as uh, shifting the image using some random padding. As you can see, uh, uh, using so we, using net evaluation mode train, uh, there is a random uh, augmentation, but with uh, the, the net evaluation mode test, it's it's uh, sort of frozen. And then to, to add this layer into uh, your models, uh, you can use net prevent, uh, and that's it. I think, I think it, I have some uh, like size augmentation on my notebook, and there's like uh, that, that, that why it's like so big that I that I change, I guess. But yeah, basically, um, the image augmentation layer is here. Then the, there is the possibility to add some uh, dropout layers. Uh, there are like uh, some of the nets in the net, uh, from net repository do not contain uh, dropout layers. So one way to um, add them is uh, just in, uh, using net insert after the, the final prediction layer and uh, using uh, the dropout layer. Uh, in this case, it was like 20%. So, um, the next uh, technique it's called also a, 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 it's called label smoothing, and this is instead of using hard labels for cross entropy, it's uh, using a, a, a smooth labels. This is to avoid um, models to be overconfident in the result. And here there is a, a small example using MNIST data, and you can see that the top one error can be decreased uh, several points. Uh, transfer learning, it's when we have already, uh, an already trained model and we don't want to retrain from scratch uh, that architecture. So we can uh, freeze all the layers except the, the last uh, one using uh, learning rate multipliers. And there is a link here to a nice tutorial using Wolfram language for performing uh, transfer learning. Uh, there is also the option of le learning rate schedule that will allow you uh, to down the learning rate 
over the different epochs during the training. And finally, there is the, the, the blind training, which is once uh, the model is fully trained. Um, the idea is that you train again, uh, also using the validation data. So in the next session, I'm gonna talk about uh, using not notebook templating uh, for test analysis reports. So here the idea is, uh, this is a, a nice introduction uh, video uh, to the notebook templating by uh, Anthony uh, Zupnit. And I think here, since we are running uh, multiple experiments uh, and training different models, it was a good idea to use uh, a kind of a notebook template. So one can create, um, using create notebook function, uh, a template notebook. I think I have it here. here. So once uh, this will open you a new uh, template notebook, which you can edit and create uh, your own template. In this case, uh, I wanted to have um, the, the experiment name and then um, some code to compute the, the, the top one, top three and top five probabilities, which we can um, specify that this cell with the cell behavior um, that it should be run, but afterwards it should be deleted from the final report. And then uh, I'm also generating a, a report table using read, specifying certain um, as, uh, parameters that will be introduced using the slot. And in this case, the cell behavior I want for this cell is two. Um, be evaluated and, and hidden. So we only see the, the table through it. As well, uh, the, the same for, for the, the result uh, object for on the training. And, and the same for, for, the, for the log files where we can obtain the, the validation uh, loss and put them as well as the rates. So um, we have to specify the, the arguments that we want to pass to the template. And once we have them, um, we can directly apply uh, a template, apply into uh, the template notebook with the arguments, and it will uh, compute the notebook. I will not do it live here, since it takes a while to, to create the, to compute the top one accuracies for, uh, for the, the, all of this, the testing set. So that's the final result of one such uh, report notebook. You can see here uh, the top one, two, three, and two, five accuracies, the model size and the model speed. And then uh, the result of it is, is nice to, to check <clears throat> for how long was, was the pain, uh, the, the number of epochs, as well as the different methods that were used. And I think um, finally the the losses, the you know, addition loss against the the error rate, um, the, the, the the round losses are a good way to compare um, to, to to check the how the model was doing. If there was overfitting or some other problems. Um, <clears throat> finally, I'm saying that we we were doing many different. Uh, uh, so we, we ran several experiments and had, uh, different trained models. And here, a good, a good way to to compare the experiments is uh, to plot all all the the different validation losses <coughs> and and check out the the most promising models uh, with the lowest uh, validation curve. Another uh, thing that one can do with uh, the trained nets is uh, to compare um, them on, on other applications. Here, it's, for example, one can perform uh, one-shot learning using classify, using a feature extractor, and, and taking the, uh, 
uh, <clears throat> so in this case, we're like examples of uh, two different spider species that are not that, that were not in the training for the model. So um, it, it was doing a good job for this a small example. Uh, and other functions that that can be also you uh, run with that in the nets are um, find clusters. And of course, uh, a future space plot can also uh, be a good way to to check different um, behaviors of, of the Trinet net in comparison to the original model or some other uh, image image net data Trinet uh, model. Finally, um, I want to to point out uh, other. Uh, future direction that we want to, to go is to also to uh, improve uh, the, the net graph uh, by fusing some batch norms and, and compilations and also like removing the dropouts on, on the final uh, internet net with a uh, you know, speed up the model. We also want to update the, the, the ontology graph as Maria mentioned. And there's uh, some data curation that we could do, for example, in the training data and test data, there is like several uh, uh, um, placeholder images, images that contain uh, non-useful information that uh, were mistakenly uh, added in the training set. And then, uh, a, a, a next step that we could do is to to go and, and train these these models uh, remotely. Uh, for the future, uh, I think we will create some tutorials on that. Uh, on using, for example, the, this is a, a nice guide on, on remote batch. As well, uh, we might want to train them uh, on some uh, external Amazon uh, server. Then here I'm pointing to you some um, uh, image data sets available. This is in, in, in the Wolfram data repository. Uh, this is uh, also open, but not so external uh, with many millions of different images from animals and, and flora. And finally, I also mentioned that you always have uh, several sections on image classification in the Introduction to the machine learning book from from Etienne and Bernard, and I think with this uh, I want to conclude.